Welcome. In this video we're going to write code that will implement the add use case in our sci-fi library database application. In this video you will review the add use case and related components and we'll learn how to write code that will add a record to the database. Here we see an example of the final version of our application in action. For this video we're going to add the capability that's related to the add a book link that we see at the bottom of the table. Currently the application is already performing a read which results in this list of books from the database. What we're going to add starts when they click a link below the table. This will take us to a view that has a simple form where we can add a title an author, and a number of pages. When we click Add Record, it should add that book to the database, and then we'll do another read to get the, a new list. We can see that the Add has successfully added our new record to the database, and it appears at the bottom of our table. Before we write the code, let's review some of the design diagrams that are specific to the add use case. First we see here our model class for book. This class diagram shows that it has several field variables and a couple of constructors and appropriate getters and setters. This is used throughout all of our use cases but we only had to create it once. This site map shows the order that things happen. We saw this in action as we looked at the final version. User will see a table that was created based on a read to the database. For the add use case, they will then click on the add entry. This will take them to the add entry page where they can enter the title, the author, and the number of pages. When they click on an add entry button on the form page, it will then add that record to the database We'll do a new query and generate the list again that we see in the top figure. This time though the list will include the added entry. Here's a swim lane style diagram that shows the components we'll need to accomplish this task. On the client side we start at the table listing that was the result of our read query. A user will click on the add entry prompting a request to our server. Following the MVC design pattern, we'll at least use a servlet and a JSP to handle the controller and the view. No need to use anything from the model. In fact, we could have just used JSP here. We'll see that the servlet is quite minimal. This results in the view that shows the form where we can add the entry. The user will type in the data into the appropriate text boxes and then click the Add Entry button. A second request will be sent that will go to the Add Servlet, which will process the Add Entry request. It'll make use of a helper class, we'll call that add query, that will actually do all the work of querying the database, and that will also use the book class. Once the controller and the helper class are finished with their tasks, instead of going back to the client right away, we're going to add a read request. So we're not going to have a JSP that creates a final view here. Instead, we'll submit the read request, which will then go to the MVC design pattern that creates the main page with the database table. So here's our current project open in Eclipse and you can see we have the components that we've created for only the read use case. We had an index page to get things started, the JSP. A request would go to the read servlet. The read servlet would request help from the DB helpers class read query and the book from the model to perform the query. The results will be passed on to read.jsp to show the database table view. To start the add query, let's begin with the read.jsp. You recall from looking at the example, we need to include a link here below the table. That will allow us to get the add use case started. Here in read.jsp, we see very minimal code. The table is coming in as an attribute and then is simply being printed out in the middle of the page. So let's make some space just below the table to add a hyperlink. We'll put the text that the user sees as add a book. Then what do we want to use as our URL? 
Remember the URL will be mapped to a servlet. So we can put something simple here, like simply add, if we prefer. So we need to remember that add is going to be the URL mapping for the servlet that we're going to create for the first request that will end up with the form. Now if we follow the request through, we need to make a servlet. So we're going to get started with the add form servlet. Right click on controllers, type new, and choose servlet. Let's call this one add form servlet. We can leave the class name and the servlet name the same. Go to next. We need to adjust the URL mapping to match what we used in our hyperlink. So let's edit this and let's simply change it to slash add. Recall that the slash is required in this pattern. Click OK and then finish and this should create our servlet. This servlet is going to do very minimal work. At this point it will just pass execution on to the view. The reason we might still want to use a servlet, even though it doesn't do much, is because later we might want to add more capability. And so the servlet will already be here should we wish to do that. Let's only handle a get, so let's get rid of the post. Recall that we don't need to have both get and post if we're only using one. We can always put it back in later if we want to. Or we can pass execution from the post to get if we want to handle both. Let's first set up a string for our URL, and let's call this one addform.jsp. That's where we'll be going next. To pass execution on to the, this addform.jsp, we need a request dispatcher. hand it our URL string. Notice I need to import my request dispatcher class. Then we'll simply forward execution on to the JSP passing along the request and response objects. So for this add use case, the add form servlet is complete. Next we'll need to create the add form.jsp. To create the add form.jsp, right click on web content and choose new and let's pick JSP file and we need to call it add form.jsp because that's what our URL was in the servlet. Select finish and it should create that. I'm going back to the uh, read page just to quickly copy the title, paste it in and make a small adjustment here. Let's call it Ultimate Sci-Fi Library add a book as the title and we'll make that a headline as well. To keep this simple, all we need is a form. To type form, let's give it a name. The action is where we need to go to next. This needs to go next to the add servlet. We've used the word add before, so let's just call this add book and let's use method equal get. Now we just need to make our form components. Let's have a label for the title, followed by a text box with the name, title, and value, null. We need the same thing for author and pages, so might as well copy and and edit and finally we need to have a button so that we can add the record input type equal submit name equal submit value equal and the book. So when the add form is shown, we'll see a blank form that allows us to enter title, author, pages, and then click on the button to add the book. When the button is clicked, we'll make a request to add book, which should then go to the next servlet that will actually perform the add. So we'll create that next.
To create the Add Servlet, right-click on Controllers, New, Pick Servlet. Let's call this Add Servlet. Select Next. We need to adjust the URL to match the action from our Add Form. So select that, choose Edit, and let's change the URL mapping to Add Book. Finish. Let's once again delete the post so we don't have to fool with it. Now we need to do a little bit more. In this servlet, we need to do a little bit more than we did in the Add Form servlet. We first need to get the data from the form. We then need to get a helper object to perform the Add query. And then we need to pass execution on to the read use case. Let's start with getting the data from the form. These are our old friends where we're using request.getParameter. Let's create a string title equals request.getParameter from title. Recall that title as a parameter has to match a text box that's in the form. Let's copy that and adjust for the author. And we can also adjust for our pages. There's going to be a type mismatch, so we need to be sure to parse this to an int. OK, so of the three things the servlet needs to do, we've done the first. Let's skip down to the last, because that's another easy one. Pass execution on to the read use case. Here's a quick look at the deployment descriptor. Notice for the read use case to begin, I simply have to have the URL pattern for read. At the add form servlet, I got some nice code that I can just copy, then paste into this one, and simply change the URL to slash read. Actually, I noticed that I'm going to have an error back here in the add form servlet. I need to have a slash before that add form. Back at the add servlet, we have one thing left to do, and that's to get a helper object to perform the add query. But we don't have the class that corresponds to that object yet, so I need to create it. So I'm going to go create that class first, and then we'll return to the add servlet in order to use that. At this point, we want to make our add query helper class. It needs to do the four general things that we do in any database connection. It needs to use the driver to make a connection object. It needs to use the connection to make a prepared statement. It needs to set up and use the prepared statement to query the database. And then we can process the query results. You recall from our read use case, we've created a helper class that does all of those general steps. It is specific to the read use case, but we can start from that as a template and adjust it to make our add use case. So we're going to create our add query helper class by using the read query helper class that currently exists as our template. So we'll right click on read query, select copy, now right click on the DP helpers package, and choose paste. Let's rename the name of the query to add query, select OK. You notice the add query class has now been added to our DB helpers package. The idea is that our current add query has pretty much what we want to do in the final version, but we need to tweak it to do this particular query instead of reading from the database. So let's work through here. We have a couple of instance variables, a connection object, declared as an instance variable so we can use it in multiple methods. We also have a result set. And the result set made sense when we were doing a read because that's the results that we get from a select query to the database. However, with a, an add or an update or delete, for those that matter, we get an int back from the database. So we don't need this result set object. So let's delete that first. Let's look at our constructor. And our constructor going to have set up the URL. And then we use the driver manager, which is based on the driver, to set up a connection object. So our constructor pretty much does number one out of the set of steps to connect to the database. So that's complete. We don't have to change that very much and it creates a connection object that's an instance variable and available for our other methods. In our previous use case with the read, the doRead method was set up to handle steps two and three, 
where we create a prepared statement object from the connection and then we set it up and use it to make a command. So let's tweak this one. Let's call it do add. And we're going to tweak it to do our add use case. Now we're want, going to want to add a book. So let's read in as a parameter a book object. Next we're going to want to set up an add query. This should be something like insert into our table books a list of the fields title author pages then the values now we're going to want to add in the values from the book object that's coming in as a parameter but let's take advantage of prepared statements so that we're not adding any user supplied data directly into the query itself we'll use the prepared statement methods to do that so it's safe from something like SQL injection hacks so let's add some placeholders. With a prepared statement, you can put placeholders, kind of like blanks that will be filled in later, as question marks. So we create our prepared statement object from the connection. Now we need to set it up. Prepared statement has a number of set methods, where we can do ps.set. Notice all the set methods available. Most of them are followed by a data type. So you want to choose the appropriate set method based on the data type that you're going to put into the query. For instance, with title, that should be a string, so we'll want to pick the set string. All of these set methods that insert into the placeholder of the uh, query come with two parameters. First, we need an integer. This integer represents the number of the question mark. If we read from left to right in our query, we see that we have the first question mark, which would be question mark number one. The second parameter is where we want to provide the value to be inserted. And in this case, that's going to be from our book class dot get title. So we have two more question marks to fill in. One is going to be just like this one. It will be question mark number two, but instead of title, we'll get the author. The third one would be ps.set. This time we're going to pick int because pages is an integer. It's the third question mark, and we'll do book.get pages. So we'll insert all those values into the query. Fix this one small error. Finally, the last tweak we need to do in order to execute this particular query, we need to change how that's done. First, we're not going to be returning a result set. Updates to a database return an int. I'm going to just ignore the int and not do anything with it, so I don't need to process it. Finally, execute query is used when you're working with SQL statements that are select statements. If we do any of the others, insert, update, or delete, we use execute, update and that should add the data to the database. So, so far in our add query class, we've done the first thing. We got a connection from the driver. We created a prepared statement from the connection. Then we set up and executed the prepared statement. And if we wanted to get the int and use it in processing some way, we would. So we've done all the things we want to do with this database query. Now, just to clean up a little bit, our previous read query where we copied this file from had a special method to do the processing portion. We do not need that here, so let's just delete that and be sure to save. So at this point, we have our add query helper, and we're almost ready to run. Let's get back to our add servlet. In the add servlet, we need to add the portion that will call the add query. Let's create an add query object. Add query, a q equals new add query and recall that we have to provide our database name, SciF library, our username, and our password. Next, we're going to want to call the aq.doAdd, but notice it takes a book object, of which I don't have one yet. I can make one. Book, book equals new book, and let's set author to author, set title to title, and set pages to pages. So we've created a book object, we created our add query helper, and set it up, and we've done an add. At this point, we should be good to go. Let's test our application to see if it works. If you have not already done so, make sure that your database is actually running in the MySQL server.
Here's our book list. It's a couple dummy things I put in when I was playing around. Let's add a new book. Let's add uh, the Magician's Guild by Trudy Canavan. And let's say that's 466 pages. Add. Notice it's been added. So our Add Book feature is now working. In this video, we have reviewed the Add Use Case and some related components and looked at the design diagrams for the Add Use Case. And we've learned how to write the code that will perform the Add Use Case and add a record to the database. This has been a Piercy production.